stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first First item of business is spotlight on the Silvermine Elementary Learning Commons. Ms. Keys. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our spotlight section of our agenda for Tuesday, January 20th. Today, the Board of Education honors the parents, staff, and students of Silvermine Elementary School. It's the Silvermine School Learning Commons Project. This project was inspired by the district's vision for converting school libraries into the 20th century learning commons. The PTO board of Silvermine recently completed a project to renovate its outdated library into a learning commons. An excellent example of teamwork, the PTO believed in the vision of providing students with a new and up-to-date space for reading, collaborating on school projects, and for using technology tools for learning. In December, members of the Board of Ed had the pleasure of attending the grand opening of the new learning commons at Silvermine Elementary. The new updated library has movable shelves, a laptop, a study bar, new carpet tiles, a modernized circulation desk, and new tables and desks for all of the students. It is a modern and welcome space for all. And I will add several of us to go, and it really is great to see a library transformed into a media center. And I have to say, I think it's the model for all of our schools. So I'm hoping at some point, um, many of our principals, our staff from the other schools can come to Silvermine and look to see what they have for their learning center. I mean, it's a great collaboration for students and staff to see that. And I really believe that a library or a media center is really the hub of the action, what's going on in a school. This project could not have been completed without the full support of both parents and students. Funds for the renovations were raised through walkathons and other fundraising events. Many local businesses and donors also supported the school by contributing funds or merchandise to help guarantee the success of the fundraisers for this cause. Beyond fundraising, parents throughout Silvermine also played a pivotal role by providing services and their talents at a reduced cost so that the entire project could be completed by the fall. PTO President Lorena Davison spearheaded the whole project. We have parents Alejandra Nunez and Barbara Varachi who volunteered interior decorating and architecture services as well. Junior Zelaya served as the contractor. Maya Santa Angelo contributed her skills as a muralist to put the finishing touches on an attractive and very inviting space. <coughs> Teachers as well also pitched in during the summer to pack all the books in the library so that work could be started as soon as possible. In the fall, librarian Jonah Kamuch reshelved all of the books in time to reopen for November. All of us here on the board would like to congratulate our principal who's also here tonight, thank you Yvette Ellis, the Silvermine PTO, all of the parents, staff, students, as well as community members who participated in this project. All of us here on the board are very proud of those who worked together to create an appealing and fun workspace for students, parents, and anyone in the community to come visit. I'd like for everyone, actually we have Yvette is here, Lorena, our PTO president. I know some of the students are here as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have the certificate tonight, but we would like to at our next meeting, we'll have certificates for the children. So if you can come up and meet the board. I know Yvette knows everyone, Lorena, and some of the students, if you can come up. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'd like to add, I, I had the pleasure of being there for the grand opening and uh, the enthusiasm at the school, um, the, the great layout of the space, the fact that you did some incredible fundraising uh, to, to pay for uh, that improvement. I mean, it's a real model for the rest of the school system to follow, and we are going to shamelessly copy you. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is uh, public comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, public comment section. Uh, just some of the guidelines. You have three minutes. When I call your name, please come up to the podium. Please give us your name and your address for the, uh, the recording. Uh, when you have 30 seconds left, I will wave my hand. When 30 seconds is up, my alarm will go off, and we ask that you please close. And of course, please keep your comments civil. Uh, first up, we have Mr. Bruce Millian. We have Ms. Sue Haney. Thank you. 
Thank you. <clears throat> okay, that's all that's signed up. Okay, that's it. Public comments. Um, before uh, Manny gives his uh, final superintendent's report, I also want to add my uh, thanks uh, to for everything that you've done here. Um, <clears throat> you um, you came in and uh, in a relatively short period of time have really managed to give this uh, school system uh, a sense of purpose, a, a set of long-term goals, a strategic plan that we've been lacking for many, many years, um, a list, a to-do list that's uh, pages long with all sorts of projects that are underway. Uh, and, and I think you've also done a very good job at uh, building the morale of the staff. Uh, certainly the, the teachers will testify to that. Bruce Mellion will testify to that. Um, and uh, even though I'm obviously very sorry to see you go, um, you're leaving us in very good shape to, uh, to pick up the pieces and move forward. And <clears throat> I just want to uh, say that uh, I'm sorry this is going to be your last superintendent's report. I wish we had you longer. Uh, I envy the people who are lucky enough to be getting you. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mike, yes. Something I just wanted to add something as well. Um, I first thought about what I was going to say tonight. You know, at first I thought I'm going to put the items down. I'm thinking I don't have a speech, so I'm not going to do that. Then I thought maybe I'll just wing it. I don't want to wing it, so I wrote some things down that I wanted to state. I think from the moment we hired you as our superintendent, um, I think we knew that you would be instrumental in taking us to new heights and having um, NPS um, a force to be reckoned with. You've made a huge impact in the past 18 months since you've been here. Just to name a couple of initiatives, um, Literacy for Parents for Their Children, Newark Early College Academy, After the Bell Program, Newark Special Ed, our new pre-K facility, um, as well as full implementation of Common Core. You're respected not only by staff, but also by the community, parents, and most importantly, the students of Newark Public Schools. You've touched the lives of many, we here on the board only wish you the best on the next chapter of your life. And I also wanted to mention a quote that you stated um, that really resonated with me, um, where you said, Newark has a tremendous passion to move forward. In my heart and in my head, I know that Newark Public Schools can turn the corner and be destined for greatness. And again, that resonated, and I thought, we will do that, and we will become that, and we're on our way to doing that. Thank you again for all that you've done. You've left a lasting impression, and we will continue to carry on what you started. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you, Mr. Lyons, and thank you, Ms. Keyes, and thank you to Mr. Mellian. Um, I failed to realize, for some reason, that tonight was Dr. Rivera's last <laughs> board meeting. Perhaps it's because I didn't want to realize it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of put it in the back. But you know, in the uh, short time that Dr. Rivera and I have had the opportunity to work together, uh, just a little over a year, but I certainly knew him before that, um, he and I have not only developed a tremendous respect for each other, I hope it's, <laughs> it's the other way too, and maybe I'm speaking a little bit out of turn, but I de at least I developed a tremendous respect for the man, and uh, we became actually very good friends and had uh, many sit-downs together with, uh, over lunch. And, um, you know, he brought a degree of transparency uh, to the Board of Education or to the school administration. I don't think that was there before. When it came time for budget, he worked on the budget. He made sure that everything was out in the open. Uh, it cooperated, put together a very, very good budget, one that gets the mission done, but still, which was uh, come in, came in at as low a percentage as possible. And I don't think there's been that kind of relationship in the past and uh, I truly appreciate that because being the mayor and trying to put together a budget that will keep taxes down is difficult enough but uh, when people bring in inflated budgets it makes it even more difficult but I can say honestly that uh, Dr. Rivera never did that I agree with everything that's been said tonight Dr. Rivera is uh, going to be missed um, and as a as a mayor I'm very very sorry to see him go because I know what he brought to the city of Norwalk uh, as a friend I wish him well and Godspeed, and uh, look forward to driving up to New London someday and having another lunch with you. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Oh, I'm also good. Yeah, I, I'm always thinking you still have two weeks left, and I didn't realize it's the last board <laughs> yeah. meeting, so I didn't prepare anything. But Manny, I just want to say, you know, from the first day. 
that I met you, the first interview, uh, I was your biggest fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you know that. I, know I mean, that. I tried to, yep. this is the guy. Yep. Um, uh, you did something for this district that was desperately needed. Um, you, you brought class. You were a gentleman in everything you've done. Uh, and I completely, wholeheartedly say this, that I'm, I'm really going to miss you. Um, I think you were a great leader, a visionary. It's exactly what this district needed and still needs. And you still have time to change your mind. <laughs> so uh, just thank you. Really thank you for everything you've thank done. Thank you, I appreciate that. Dr. Rivera, over to you. OK, <laughs> thank you for my final report. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sherelle? I hate public speaking. I didn't prepare anything either. I just want to say this is my very first time up to bat in politics and with my passion, which has always been education. So. Coming in with you at the helm, I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't have come in under a better person. So thank you. Thank you, sure. Okay. 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 Uh, I, I did want to speak uh, a little bit to one of the topics that one of the speakers brought up. Well, first of all, with Yvette still here, uh, you know, I just want to thank you again. I also, I also uh, attended the first part of the opening of the uh, uh, library uh, redesign, and I was just thrilled that mm -hmm. you know schools sort of embraced the concept, and then with the support of their uh, PTO president and the parents who chipped in, they were able to uh, to really begin that transformation at Silvermine. So thank you for that. Um, SRBI, uh, you know, one of the areas when when one of the first big assignments that I had was to tackle K five literacy. Um, you know, it was it was became pretty pretty obvious after a, a couple of months or so that this isn't about just a curriculum or a book. This is this is about a a system to improve uh, uh, literacy and to assure that all of our children by the end of grade three are reading at or above grade level. That's what we want. That's the ultimate goal. And uh, one of the key elements of that, and I remember standing over here and sharing with you an example of uh, a form that's used to be submitted to the state for intervention. And my point at that time was the very issue that, that we do have inconsistency. Uh, we do, this is a major need across the system. Um, the example that I had, you know, with names uh, lighted out, was what I considered to be a very, very, um, it, it wasn't even an inter intervention plan. It, it, it just had some references to, you know, some additional paraprofessional time and didn't really zero in on the need that a, a particular child might have. So we knew that from the very beginning. Um, as, we've, as we've made steps in this past year to bring some literacy, excuse me, some uh, leadership to our K-5 literacy initiative, uh, as, as we've now begun to have several meetings and to begin to figure out how we tackle this in a positive way. We've actually planned for, there's a major meeting tomorrow with all elementary principals where um, uh, the completion of quality uh, student learning plans in compliance with the law uh, and the nature of how these things could need to be developed is actually a, a big topic for us tomorrow. And it couldn't be a better time because students, um, the window for taking the uh, middle of the year assessment uh, closes on Friday, February 5th. Students have already taken the beginning of the year uh, assessment. They'll take a middle of the year assessment right now. It'll close on Friday, February 5th. And so what we want is to assure, and we're actually going to be working with our teachers across all of our 12 schools uh, as we take uh, some of the students most in need um, in each of their classrooms to develop uh, real to assure that there's a, d a development of high quality uh, student learning plans um, that 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 reflect the kind of standard that we want to see. Um, and you know we've talked about having several different resources that we want to bring to supporting staff in that effort. Uh, some of the, there's going to be training that's going to be needed. Uh, we want to we want to take and create exemplars. We want to. Uh, have an opportunity to bring the schools together after this exercise so we can share some of that work and most importantly monitor monitor how kids are doing to assure that they're meeting the outcomes that we expect 
So it's about building a system, it's about building practices, it's about improving standards. Um, and I just wanted to say that that is big time uh, on our radar and will continue to be. In fact, the communication that we're sharing tomorrow is signed off by myself, uh, Mr. Connolly, Mr. Tadona, uh, Maureen Ruby, uh, Craig Kreller, because it's not just literacy but also math. And, uh, uh, and, and this is moving forward. So it might be at some point in time, perhaps, um, at, a, at, a, at a meeting with the curriculum committee where they could give you an update on how that's moving. So that's one. Second issue, we have begun the transition with our interim superintendent, uh, Mr. Connolly, who spent, spent the day with us and uh, will continue to have multi, many meetings uh, over the course of uh, the next two weeks uh, that I'm here. Ex eight days and six hours. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> just kidding, just joking. Uh, so we're, so that, that transition uh, is in fact occurring. In fact, today, um, you know, the, the beginning of a plan for summer school, I had an opportunity to meet with uh, Tally Negroni and uh, uh, some of the principals of our last year's summer school. As you remember, we had talked a year ago about increasing the number of kids who ha with access to our summer programs. Mm -hmm. Well, we increased it from four weeks to five weeks. We paid attention to the curriculum and teacher training. Um, we opened up a second school at Jefferson. We were able to serve another 250 or more kids. Well, this year, uh, we want to look at three schools for summer programs uh, and hopefully bringing that number up to about 800 students who would have access, which is really a, a fraction of the kids who would benefit from a five-week program. But in the spirit of setting an, setting an agenda, having a, I shouldn't say setting an agenda, in the spirit of having a major strategy, and this being its component, it all comes down to the planning and execution and delivering on those promises. You can have a plan, you can talk about it, you gotta be able to execute and then get results. The evaluation that was done by Nicholas Cage, a consultant who is uh, funded by the Grossman Foundation, was, was, was evidence that more time for learning not only uh, helps better prepare kids for that next year, because they don't lose that, that gap in the, in the summer, that lag time, uh, but it's also better prepared hundreds more kids uh, for, for their next year. So we talked about having a longer term plan. Why not have five schools that we want to tee up uh, over the course of the next three years to expand a school each year? And we do have some schools where there are air conditioning units in the windows. I mean, so we can still do it in places and, and make it a reality and possibly be able to serve 1,200 to 1,500 students. Someone else brought up the fact that, you know, our summer schools shouldn't only be for students in tremendous need who are not meeting benchmark, but we ought to find a way to seek funding to, to allow and provide for more enrichment for students as well. So that's just an example of the kind of planning that I think needs to continue. Uh, a third item that I wanted to report uh, today was the, uh, I remember we were late last year with the school calendar mm -hmm. for the current year. I think the board didn't vote on it until April. Um, Tony's been ahead of the game this year. We have a couple of drafts. Um, we're going to be pulling our, our union uh, uh, partners together. We're going to pull other people. We're going to look at it again. Um, we should be ready by the end of next week with a recommended calendar that can go to the board for your February 2nd meeting. So, um, uh, you know, parents have been sending emails. People are asking questions. And we think it's best to, to uh, go on. Um, uh, I, I guess the, the final thing that I will say, you know, I thought about my own comments that I'd make today, and I, I figured to keep it short because I talk too much as it is. But um, I, I do want to thank the board. I want to thank you for, for giving me this opportunity. Um, you know, I was at a time in my life when I was leaving the, the private sector, if you will, and my heart is in, really, it's, it's, in, it's in serving children, particularly children who are less advantaged than others who... Uh, and I wanted to get back into uh, a, a really nice urban setting with the diversity that this community offered because I see it as an asset. I see it as a tremendous opportunity to reach all kids and, uh, and do it well with excellence. Uh, so I appreciated the opportunity to come here. I want to thank the mayor for, for your support. I want to thank the Common Council uh, for their support of our budgets. 
uh, key community leaders that, that I've worked with. And I also want to thank my staff, uh, my immediate staff, um, uh, so many principals and so many teachers who uh, have sent me emails and letters. And uh, I just want to say thank you very much for that. Um, uh, in the spirit of what some of you said earlier, um, I will say that I, I really do think we have a roadmap. And, it, and it's not perfect, and it's going to need adjustment uh, annually. Uh, but I think the, the school district is on the right track. Um, there are initiatives that you have supported that are really essential to getting systems in place, to raising our standards, uh, and making sure that standards for schools, standards for leaders, standards for our principals, um, uh, are also very high in terms of, of, of what, we, what we've said. So I guess one message would be um, uh, to, to stay, stay the course, uh, because it's the right, it, I think it's the right thing to do. Second thing I want to mention is change. Change is really hard. It, for, especially, it's hard for a lot of people, it's hard for most people. Um, you know, we talk, about, we talk about change, we've written about change, we've had PowerPoints, presentations on change. The, the, the proof is in the pudding, when the, when the rubber hits the road and you, and you know when you see behavior changing, when you see people working in collaboration, um, when you see, uh, go into a data team and you have teachers <coughs> talking together about students and, and what they can do to build on their strengths and they have a plan and they're informed and they're supported. Um, you know you've got it when you're able to get regular reports of positive improvements, having achieved our milestones, having, <coughs> having seen improved outcomes. That's a good way for the board to monitor and track how we're doing. Um, uh, how are, uh, uh, a great discussion would, from us in terms of a report to the board would be, how, are, how, how did our students do? on their uh, middle of the year assessments as compared to the beginning of the year assessments. What does that look like? What does that tell you uh, to the staff? What are you doing uh, to improve on that? So it's, it's any organization needs a plan. <laughs> one that you stick to, one that you make adjustments with, one that allows for innovation, one that allows for new opportunities. Um, uh, but there will be people, there will be obstacles in the road, there will be barriers. You, you, you just have to stick to the, the, the agenda and the change and the idea is to bring people along and more and more people get on the train and, and, uh, and then eventually those who, who can't uh, need to get off. So um, uh, I, I, my, I guess my final message would be um, that some of, the, you know, some of the frustrations that we've had, um, sometimes some of the difficulty that you go through that's inherent in any organization that's going through a transformation. Um, uh, but it's in the but but always, you know, never. Uh, I'm just preaching to myself here. You know, you, you sort of never give up. You you always keep your eye on where you want to be, where you want to go, where you want to take the system, and be respectful for people, treat people professionally, engage them, uh, but never compromise on the principles that you've set forward. Uh, and, and the passion that you have for your children. So I want to thank you uh, and tell you all that uh, I will miss you all. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the consent calendar, uh, item 62A, approval personnel, 62B, approval of budget transfers, C1 and C2, approval of Ponus Ridge trip to nature, Nature's Classroom and Roten Ponus uh, trip to Hatsukaichi City in Japan. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Mr. Kasimis moves. Uh, Ms. Harris seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All in favor, please indicate. It's unanimous, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, next item is uh, approval of facility utilization study. Uh, Mr. Rudel, you want to give us a uh, background on this one? Uh, let's see, uh, to start discussion, the uh, chair would entertain a motion to uh, approve the award of the contract to, let me get it right, Silver, Petrucelli, mm -hmm. and Associates. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kasimis moves. Is there a second? I will second. Uh, motion's made and seconded. And let's see. Um, I think it's worth just describing quickly for people the, the depth of what this facilities uh, study is going to do. Uh, it's going to have an assessment of the physical conditions of the school system, including uh, looking at each one of our buildings, determining useful life of building components like HVAC, plumbing, electrical, roofing, etc. cetera, uh, ADA accessibility recommendations, energy efficiency recommendations, Structural soundness, recommended schedule for replacement or repairs with uh, lists of priorities. Um, it's going to have a study of enrollment projections, uh, including specifically looking at uh, future housing development projects uh, planned for Norwalk. It's going to have a study of capacity of the various uh, facilities that we have as it relates to those enrollment projections, educational programs, community use, and impact on school facilities. And so this is a, a very broad study, $230,000 is, is a pretty significant project. And it's probably going to give us a better baseline sense of what we need in our school system than we've had in maybe 20 years. I remember back in the uh, mid-90s during the Esposito administration, there was a uh, Schools for the New Millennium project, which did a similar in-depth analysis. And I don't think in the last 20 years we've had anything quite comparable to that. So this is a, a very thorough analysis of physical structure, how we're using the structures, how do we deal with you know some schools that may be undercrowded and others that are bursting at the seams. Uh, you know, if you look at the, the uh, item five on our agenda tonight, um, which is assignment of students from one of the new uh, apartment complexes, uh, and we'll talk to it in more detail, that assignment is a sort of an ad hoc adjustment to uh, new developments that are pouring some kids into the school system that our old plans didn't account for. And you know, you don't want to be in a position where we're con continuously making ad hoc adjustments like this. Uh, and, and Tony Dodona can speak to that particular adjustment when we get to that item on the agenda. But this kind of study should allow us to organize our school system so we don't have to jump around and make adjustments like that because a new project gets, comes online that wasn't in our old plans. So uh, I think the, the, the value of this is going to be tremendous for the school system and the timing, uh, you know, we'll get it at the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. Uh, that's about the time that we start putting together our budgets. So the information that we gather from this report can inform our next capital budget requests to the city, so I think this is a very positive development. Um, one thing I, I will note, and, and Mike may want to comment on this, but I, I talked to Mike Barbas about it, and Mike had emphasized that he feels that we can't simply uh, turn the consultants loose and see, see again in August. Uh, I think that you know the the facilities committee of the board needs to meet on a monthly basis with these guys. Obviously, our staff will be meeting with them. Um, 
because they're going to be bringing us ideas that they're going to want feedback on, and we need to be in a position where we can do that, uh, maybe discuss it at board level if significant decisions are made about where we want to aim them. You know, like if you read the materials, one of the things that we're going to be looking at is are there any places where a K-8 organization of the schools makes sense? And it might. I don't know. You know, it depends on the facilities of the school and a whole lot of educational concerns. If they're going to be looking into things like that, we need to make sure that we're continuously interacting with them uh, so we don't just get surprised by the final report when it comes in in August. Um, but with that proviso, which I think is an important one, I, I'm uh, very supportive of this proposal. Are there any other comments, questions, Mike? Well, just to follow up, Mike, on what you were saying, um, you know, it, it is a very involved process. It's you know, going to cost us a good deal of money, but it's going to generate a really phenomenal report. I thought the people from Mill on that firm were really impressive. The guy from there really mm -hmm. got it. They've done Stanford's plan. They've done Darianne's plan, Milford, Waterbury. I, I'm very familiar with what's going on at Darianne. They're bursting at the seams. We know Stanford has having a lot of challenges, so I think they're, they're really up to speed. They know the challenges the municipalities are facing. They know the laws. They know, um, you know the issues, which has been an issue for Norwalk in the past about our racial balance issues. You know, we have this specific consent decree with the state, which we've been on the edge several times. And I think are we maybe even learning <coughs> two years ago. I don't know if we've gotten one last year, Tony. But I mean, I know we've had them, right? So this is something, you know, I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. It is mm -hmm. very complicated. Um, and, and at the same time, it has a huge impact on, on all of us. So we need to really, we need to do our homework. Um, it's really too bad we're in transition right now um, with the superintendent. So I did actually also talk to Manny about this, saying, you know, look, you know, ideally the superintendent would really be kind of overseeing this. But as we're in transition, that's, that's not really so feasible. Um, and Manny did offer to assist us on this and, and maybe come to a monthly committee meeting. And I think we, 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 need, uh, we need to take him up on that offer. And uh, you know, I think we, we really don't want to pursue this contract unless we have some kind of an arrangement like that. Uh, because it, too much is at stake here. We really need someone who's seen the whole picture, who's run our school system, who knows where the challenges are, who knows where curriculum's going. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at introducing an international baccalaureate program at our high school and then bringing it down to lower grades. That has an impact. Uh, you know, NECA has an impact. All these, everything we've been doing is all, is, it's all interconnected. Right. So, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to support this, uh, signing this contract and proceeding, but I think it, it has to be with the understanding that, you know, on some level, Manny will still be involved. Uh, and giving us some guidance based on, on his experience from running, being superintendent of the school system and, and having designed a lot of where we are going over the next five to 10 years. So we're not get, letting you get away that easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to uh, uh, volunteer great. my efforts. The, the, uh, uh, as superintendent in Rochester, we actually went through a major uh, facility utilization study and then developed a plan and a capital improvement plan from that. And that had an impact on 35, 40 schools, and it was quite extensive. But the the basic mechanics and the framework and all the interlocking uh, 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 pieces that have to fit here, so that it makes sense. And 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 then and then the big thing is how you align it to the vision of where you want your system to be, and how you incorporate instruction and teaching and learning, is all a key part of this. So um, uh, happy to assist. Thank you. Sorry? Yes, uh, and I do agree that it would be great uh, for Dr. Rivera to assist us on this. But we also have a very capable, very experienced interim superintendent, so I'd like to see a collaboration on that, uh, if that could be so noted. Um, as I said, Mr. Connolly is not new to the game. Uh, no, Mr. Connolly is here, by the way. I do know where he is, yes, I do. <laughs> I'm talking. Uh, so I would like to see that. Not sure. Uh, when Dr. Rivera's responsibilities uh, will take him away to New London and he will not be available, even though he would like to be. So that's why I'm thinking that we should have a collaboration between the interim superintendent and uh, Dr. Rivera. Okay. I agree. Mm -hmm. Ms. Harris? You mentioned that this will address the racial balance. Will this also address the, the I think it's the Code 99 schools? District yes. 99? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
And by the way, just a uh, note for the uh, for the record that um, uh, Mr. Rule informed me, and, and there'll be a report made to the board on this. But uh, the um, uh, consulting firm um, has uh, completed its uh, capital needs. Um, it's the same firm, Silver Petru Petrucelli, has completed the. Uh, uh, architectural study and, and needs assessment for Briggs. So um, that can be factored in. Obviously, they've already completed the work for Briggs. They can now feed that into the system with all the other schools. Okay. Right. I'll just be real quick. I, I did what Mike uh, had said. Um, I think this is long overdue. And one of the things that really impressed me about the company is not only their knowledge uh, and the work that they've done in the other towns around us, but the fact that they're going to meet with every single stakeholder under the sun in Norwalk and get feedback and input to me is uh, invaluable and um, I think it really help us. Uh, I'm, I support this 100 percent. That's a good point. Part of part of their work description is going to be to reaching out to yep. parents and teachers and, and people in the community yep. to get input from them about their needs and, and mm -hmm. views of the school system as well as you know staff. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. And I commend the board for, for uh, commissioning this study because as you look around the community and you see all the developments going on, we know that's going to impact our school system. Yep. And a lot of these schools are in need of infrastructure <clears throat> repair. Mm -hmm. And this is going to help us put a roadmap. Yeah. And one of the things that's so important for any community is knowing what's coming so you can budget for it. Yep. We have a five-year budget plan for the capital budget. If you don't know what's coming, the surprises can kill you. So, sure. you know, we want to make sure that we, we do it and we do it right and we do it in the time that needs to be done. So uh, I appreciate this and I look forward to actually being a part of this as well. Yeah. Good. All right. Any other comments? I did right. uh, forget to mention that Mr. Barbas' suggestion of meeting with the board periodically as we go through the process is something that I would okay. definitely uh, mm -hmm. echo. Yeah, it's, it's in the plan. They actually have that. Uh, in their schedule for these yeah. periodic board updates. I can share this with you. And the reason being is is that, um, and I, I mentioned it last meeting, that the board needs to be part of the process. Okay. I'm sorry. To be part of that process. And I think when you have these reports that come in and we, you know, we're not taking uh, along the journey with them, then we kind of sit here and just kind of rubber stamp something. So that's why I do agree with Mr. Barbara on the fact that uh, it's something that we need to make sure that we have uh, Updates, and I'm glad to know that it is part of the schedule. Yeah, Rich, is there? Can we make copies? Yeah, we could uh, for, for everybody. Yeah, if you could get everybody a copy, everybody on the board a copy of that schedule. That'll, that'll. Okay. I know their first review is in April, Thanks. so that's the first time they get back to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All right. Here now we'll proceed to a vote. All in, uh, in favor of approving the uh, utilization study consultant, please indicate. And that is unanimous. Thank you. Next item is approval of uh, window shades capital purchase. Uh, back to you. Um, as part of the school security capital budget, um, one of the items within there was uh, window covering. Um, it was the recommendation of the assessments that we had on our school for window shades. Um, we put an RFP out, we had six uh, bids submitted, and the recommendation is for our top three contract materials. Um, the expectation is the amount will be approximately $300,000. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the uh, Window Shades capital purchase. Mr. Kasimis moves. Ms. Keyes seconds. Discussion or questions? Um, just uh, to note, uh, you know, in the description on the proposal, it says new window treatment shades are going to be flexible to provide sun shield, allow for natural light in the building, serve as insulation from heat and cold, and provide cover in the event of an emergency. I mean, this is one of the reasons. Yeah. Uh, that people had raised this is you bring the shades down immediately, you've mm -hmm. removed targets if, if yeah. somebody's coming after you. But it also provides a lot of other ancillary benefits, even, even energy mm -hmm. control. Uh, and this is part of our uh, approved capital budget request. Mm -hmm. So if there's uh, no other questions or comments, we'll proceed to a vote. All in favor of uh, approving this capital purchase, please indicate. And it's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right, item five, approval, approval of assignment of students from 515 West Avenue to Tracy Elementary School. Uh, Mr. Dodona, can you uh, give us the background on this one? Under that's, what, that's what I said. Yeah. It's yeah. largely yeah. unoccupied. Yeah. Across the street, they're going to do so, some more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did send a letter to the zoning commission, an email when this first came to our attention, and I just said, okay, you know, how many more units in total are coming on, and what's the mix? How does the mix vary from what's been built so far? Are they all one bedrooms, or you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. just so we could get an idea. They still have not responded. They say they're working on it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The 12 children, are they currently going to Jefferson? They're currently going to Jefferson. They enrolled because that was, their, that was Okay. And are we going to move them to Tracy? Well, not this year. Yeah, next year. Okay. Okay, yeah, man. I just make one comment. Uh, this is a good example of why I was so pleased that you unanimously approved the facility utilization study. Because, you know, we have uh, almost within, within a stone's throw distance from Tracy, there's another apartment complex that's been there for years where, where the children's home district is Silvermine. And I, I think this is clearly needed. It's a, in this particular, in support of this resolution, I think it's needed. It's a, it's really a temporary fix, I think. We, mm -hmm. we have to look at the system as a whole. I think inevitably there, and we can't skirt it. I won't be here, but you can't skirt it. <laughs> there, 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 there will likely have to be some recommended uh, attendance zone changes and boundaries as we look at where new developments are popping up, the capacity of our school uh, and each of our schools where we, we have another building that's underutilized uh, in another part of the city. All this has to be part of the mix, I think, that's going to have to be dealt with in a very thoughtful way with really good, sound, thoughtful solutions rather than kind of the Band-Aid uh, every year we're going to move this person here and that person there. Are you? Uh, Tony, will the students follow their natural progression from Tracy to West Rocks, or they will, will they go? They'll follow their natural progression. Then go to Norwalkai, not Prime Command? Correct. Okay. But, but you know, Marty, I, it's a rental complex. No one's, I doubt, you know, pe renters don't stay in one place for that long, so the odds of one of these kids starting going all the way well, through. But what if somebody starts in high school, are they going to go to Norwalkai? Follow the natural okay. Right. And then, you know, our, our problem right now is as we're looking at these new complexes is in our elementary schools. I mean, we just nearly um, with that new Avalon that was on that Westport Norwalk line, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those students all went to Marvin and we just stayed at Bergen to have a problem there. So yeah. uh, we were able to just fit all the students there. So we really have to start looking at the new complexes and this study that we It's just my point is that they may not all be elementary kids that move in. It could be a high school student right. that moves in. Right. So, or a middle school. So where would they go? Well, they'll follow yeah. the okay. West yeah. Okay. Thanks. Wherever they appear in the, yeah, in the and track. track. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense because otherwise you're going to have total confusion. Sure. Exactly. Again, that's going to also affect the buses. So we're going to just keep the buses right. in the right that will have the assumptions. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, approve the assignment of students from 515 West Avenue to Tracy Elementary School. Is there a motion? Ms. Keys moves, Ms. Harris seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? And that's unanimous. Are you serious? No, wait, I no? don't think she voted yet. Yeah, I just saw her vote. Oh, you no, raised your did. hand at the end. No, no, no. She was voting. I'm voting. <laughs> 
Okay? So, We're good. Thank you. All right. Just looking thank out you. for you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I took down. All right. Uh, next item, uh, once again, Mr. Rudel, December 2014 <laughs> monthly financial report. Give you some exercise tonight. <laughs> Keep up, keep it up. Very nice. Good job. The mayor's happy. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next will be committee representative uh, reports. We will start this time with Mr. Barbas. What's going on with uh, negotiations? Uh, as you know, most of our contracts, all but one of our contracts is settled. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the few mm -hmm. service workers and a few of their employees, not many, are, we do provide them with medical insurance. And we are trying to, they're our last bargaining unit to not be on that. HSAs. Counts the HSAs. So um, it's taking a little while to convince them of that, but we just heard from them today, actually. And I think we're going to try to meet with them on uh, the 29th, and we're trying to get Bob Lindbergh, and Rich actually talked to you about that, thank you, excuse me. Uh, but get Bob Lindbergh, our insurance consultant, to come in and kind of walk them through kind of, you know, the mechanics of an HSA. Okay, good. Uh, Ms. Keyes, policy? Yes, we just had our policy committee meeting um, prior to this meeting at 6.30 tonight. Um, Sherelle was present. Um, we had Artie as well. And Tony gave a um, wonderful presentation on committee work for attendance, excuses, and denial of credit. And I believe we're gonna be, you're going to be working on a committee that's going to have parents and teachers, or teachers and administrators, involved in that committee so we're going to be working on that um information technology ralph was going to be doing a presentation but unfortunately he had an emergency so he wasn't able to so we'll put that in for the following meeting we also discussed meeting times um, which we unanimously approved during our policy meeting which we will be bringing back to the board for further discussion and hopefully okay. approval and action on that okay thank you all right, uh, curriculum committee uh, last week had uh, very detailed uh, updates on the uh, NEASC process. This is the accreditation process that our two high schools go through uh, every decade or so, I guess. Um, Norwalk uh, High School's uh, so maybe the report right there has, is, uh, is nearing completion. Uh, they have, um, uh, in fact, uh, the NEASC accreditation visit to Norwalk High is March 22 to 25. Um, following which uh, we'll start getting feedback from the, uh, the commission. Uh, Brian McMahon is somewhat behind Norwalk uh, High, but they have a very active uh, process of preparing for that accreditation. And of course, accreditation goes over every aspect of how the school uh, is run. It's management, the curriculum, the facilities. Um, it's, it's, it's like a small-scale version for the high school of the large-scale strategic planning process that we went through for the school system as a whole. So those are both coming along uh, very well. Uh, we also had a uh, update on the um, special education program going on in Norwalk, uh, in particular addressing some of the concerns that uh, have been raised in the, the CREC reports. Um, I think the conclusion is we've, we've made a lot of progress, although there's still room for improvement, and the committee is going to periodically uh, uh, finance, Ms. Murray. Uh, my question, I have first a question. Um, for policy, there was HR policies that Mr. Palmer had, Lee Palmer had presented. Is there any game plan on how you're going to actually go through those? Do you remember the I know he did. Them out? Yeah, he did present it. Um, I think we're going to need to get him back. I haven't heard back from him, so we'll probably have to have him in possibly for another meeting to go over it further. Okay. So there's no plan yet, okay. No. Um, Finance. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finance. We're having our first uh, meeting uh, for 2015. I can think about where I was. Uh, <laughs> February 11th. Um, and for, I think Mr. Tremonti, oh, there's only one. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Tremonti and Mr. Barbas, mm -hmm. uh, the members of the Finance Committee now. And uh, uh, I think it's a, a wonderful uh, example of what our kids are doing 
and I made mention that, you know, we're the adults in a room, we're supposed to be setting the standard, and, you know, this is a case where we learn from our kids. And I think it's something that all of the adults should maybe put into practice and take a 100-day pledge of nonviolence, and maybe something we should spread throughout our entire school system. Um, so I just want to thank Ms. Murray for the opportunity to speak. Um, and thank, again, West Rocks and Ponus Ridge. Uh, I also uh, was asked to speak at uh, Columbus oh, yeah. Peace Day as well. Day, yeah. And so that was a great pleasure. So. Mm -hmm. Good, thank uh -huh. you. Uh, Ms. Keyes. Yes, um, actually Mr. Barbas and I, I know the mayor was there for the Martin Luther King celebration that evening. Artie, you did an amazing job. You really did. Thank Your you. speech was fantastic. But it's just so nice to come and have community members there and parents and a lot of young children. And it really was a fabulous um, night. I mean, I think we really appreciated it. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, the whole weekend was absolutely amazing with so many different events and so many different opportunities to share stories and to talk about what Martin Luther King stood for and how we can get to where we, from where we are to where we need to be. Um, one thing that uh, I want to commend Reverend Ingram, Rosa, Miss Murray, um, um, I think um, Shirley Mosby, the people that served on the committee. Dr. And Moore. Dr. I was going to say and Dr. Moore uh, opens up her school all the time, and it was an absolutely amazing experience uh, 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 Friday morning. But also, um, one of the things that we talked about, this is National Mentoring Month, and for anybody who would consider being a mentor, I'd ask that you really think hard about it because you really can make a difference in the life of a child and help them. They may be a thriving child, but that little extra contact that they can have with you will help them thrive even to a greater degree. But at the um, MLK uh, ceremony last night, the citywide service, uh, Bruce Morris put something in proper perspective for me. Uh, he asked everybody to consider donating $100 to the Martin Luther King Scholarship Fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he broke it down in a way that you almost have to say, why not? Mm -hmm. And as he says, are our children not worth $2 a week. Mm -hmm. And you think about that, if each of us took $2 a week out of our pocket, something that we might spend on a bottle of water, and instead of, drinking instead of drinking a bottle of water, go get a tap water and put it in the bottle. But if we put that $2 a week away, and at the end of the year, we'd have $100 to donate to the scholarship fund, and we can truly make a difference in the life of a child. And so if you want to be a mentor, uh, help uh, with the scholarship fund, uh, these, we're investing in our children, and they're the young people that are going to carry the torch uh, when we're no longer able to carry it. Mm -hmm. So they're going to make the difference in this community. So I would again encourage everybody to, and, and one thing I, I'll have to say, I was a little disappointed last night, Ms. Murray, I don't know if you were. It seemed like, maybe it was the cold weather, it mm. just didn't seem like we had the large crowd that we've had in the past. It's been colder than last night. Yeah. Last night was mild yeah. compared to some of the... Yo, some, oh, I've been out when it was been two degrees. Mm -hmm. But I was a little bit disappointed in the oh, amount yes. of people there last night. Um, I, I understand why that may happen. People have other things to do, and it's you know time of year. But um, we need to get more people out there and hearing the message and, and working together towards what we know Norwalk can be and how we can help um, uh, bring the dream of Martin Luther King to our own community. So thank you. Thank you. Any thanks? Ms. Harris? Uh, Mr. Barbas, <laughs> then Ms. Yeah. Harris. So it, just, it has been a really busy time, so, you know, Mike, you and Heidi and I went to uh, Silvermine School for the Learning Commons, the opening, which uh, was really cool to see in person, and that's you know, the, what we honored tonight in Spotlight. Um, I did go to the uh, ceremony at Jefferson, Jefferson mm -hmm. School, for anyone who oh, yeah. doesn't realize, oh, yeah. and the mayor was there as well and spoke. Uh, they became a Blue Ribbon School, which is a national honor that they were given. Uh, which obviously is very, very impressive. It was for their improvement in, uh, in closing the achievement gap, which is uh, obviously a major, major accomplishment. Mm -hmm. uh, as Heidi mentioned, a number of us were at the L MLK ceremony last night. There was a singer, this woman from New York, oh, Hartford. Hartford. Yeah. It was, I bought her a CD. Yeah. Jolie <laughs> Brown. <laughs> Jolie Brown. She, she was, was amazing. Great. Really yeah. good. She was uh, so good. She comes she back. On Sunday night, she began, and that's. Yeah, she was Sunday night at, at Calvary. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, I am the board member representative uh, from, from the Norwalk Board of Ed at CES. 
Uh, they had their monthly board meeting last week. One thing, talking about the calendar, uh, the there is thanks to the our friends at Hartford, we now have to be on a uniform calendar with all the other schools in Fairfield County. Uh, that was supposed to kick in next year, but actually has now been postponed into 16-17. Uh, we do get five grace period days, but it is very structured. You do not get a week for February break, like we've been doing, but other towns have been having a week. Um, you are supposed to start the Thursday before Labor Day. Um, you, it's, it's very, very defined. So, um, so, so February break is gone as of February break is like years. what we've been doing as a long weekend. But okay. those oh, okay. towns that had a full week That's will gone. not have a full uh, week anymore, okay. but you could use your five grace period mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, both Columbus Day and Veterans Day are school days, according to the Fairfield County calendar. Once again, you could use one of your five grace days. There is uh, a day off for each of the, for Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Some districts have had more days. We used to have more days for that, mm -hmm. unless true. it's on the weekend. Um, so I don't think looking at the calendar for us, it's going to be a huge adjustment, mm -hmm. uh, but it will kind of set in stone. And I know some parents have wanted us to modify. I've had a lot of parents tell me they'd love February break back. Um, and I even said to them, I mm -hmm. said, well, why don't, you know, now that we don't have CMT yeah. testing in March, you know, maybe we should do a week or two weeks in March, you know, which some parents have asked for. But nope, this is... You know, it's mandated. Decision by committee, and <laughs> yeah. done. And, and the guy from CES told me, he was like, it's done, you're not going to be able to play this. So just so you know, that's out there. Uh, there was a, a very interesting presentation about recruitment for minority teachers uh, and the efforts, you know, what has been done in the past and how they were not successful, some of the new efforts that are being done at the state that CES is doing. Um, I did email the whole board. I did not hear back from anyone except from Chairman Lyons. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we are hoping to invite the woman from CES who's responsible for this to, um, you know, to come and speak to us about what some of the efforts, what some of the things that are being done. I know we're going to change our hiring and, and make it more of a focus, start hiring in April for positions we know we're going to open up. And that should really help us because that's one thing I think that's really worked against us in that, in that vein. Um, so, um, unless anyone's opposed, I think we should. Oh, yeah, I, I would love to have her come and speak to us. So, um, I think that's uh, pretty much everything I have to report. Okay. Ms. Harris. <laughs> I just want to let everyone know you guys all have a package, mm -hmm. and the library is having a community conversation in line with what we've been discussing in the um, curriculum committee. And we're focusing on special education, and our very own Marine Ruby will be presenting on March 4th. So everyone should have a package. So I hope to see some of us there. You also have something from the Norwalk Public Library, our databases. And man, this is for you. You have one week yep. before you move. <laughs> <laughs> We're now allowing um, people who work in Norwalk or who are affiliated with Norwalk to be able to get a temporary card so you can use our databases. And we have some really good databases for business use, for research use. So I just want right. everyone to see that. And as a thank you to the entire city, um, <laughs> we have a calendar for you, and it has all the Norwalk Public Library artwork on it. Oh, great. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Murray, did you? I, I, I had a thought with uh, Mr. Barbas with the CES because at Minority uh, Recruitment, mm -hmm. um, we were at, a, I was in Hartford, and the, at the uh, commissioner, the woman who, she works for the commissioner, had, they made a presentation and it was on what was being done at the state level. Um, but what I thought was, can at some point we, an understanding of where we are, what we're doing. I know uh, Mr. Palmer did give us right. a handout, but I just think in, in some cases when you're, uh, we know we're trying to kind of beef up and step up our, our recruitment for minority candidates, mm -hmm. uh, but if we know really have a conversation with our own staff to know where they are, what they're thinking, mm -hmm. I think that would be beneficial, at least it would be beneficial to me. Okay. Um, especially because it's new. We never had this concentrated effort. We've had HR departments who've had, you know, a fragment or a part of that department, um, you know, going to a college fair, doing some things like that. Mm -hmm. But this is really, now we have a position. So I really like to have a, a full presentation before we bring that person in, if that should happen. But I just think mm -hmm. we need to have that. Um, because okay. we know some, one of the things is timing. 
mm -hmm. heard this over and over again, why we miss out on good candidates. Okay. Okay. And there's other factors, but that can be saved until we actually have the uh, conversation. Okay. We'll look into that. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, my announcements. Uh, we have uh, for the board members the superintendent's search uh, code of ethics document, which uh, we agreed to sign. So everybody here, please make sure you sign that and uh, get it over to me before you leave. Um, this is just a an agreement among the board members as to the uh, process, the code of ethics for governing. How we will go through the superintendent search process, the obligation of confidentiality, uh, uh, etc. Uh, um, so, just a reminder to everybody to fill that in. Um, reminder that we have the public outreach process next week for the superintendent search. Um, we've, uh, we've got that into the news media, and it's. Uh, I think is that is it up on the website yet? Uh, Brenda, we were yes, going to, okay, yeah, and we were going to do a blast email also to all the parents. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have three public outreach uh, sessions next week on Monday night. It's going to be Norwalk High School, 7 o'clock in the library, Tuesday night, Calvary Baptist Church, 7 o'clock, uh, and uh, on Wednesday, Brian McMahon High School in their library, again at 7 o'clock. Each session will run about two hours. Uh, there'll be Spanish translators available at each session. Um, Proact Search will be here to conduct the sessions, uh, and we certainly urge uh, all members of the public who would like to have some input into the process of searching for the superintendent, what you know characteristics you'd like to see, what goals you'd like the superintendent to work on. Uh, we want to hear from you, so please come to uh, any of those sessions. All three are open to uh, anyone who would like to attend. And. Uh, finally, I just wanted to uh, officially recognize James Connolly, who's uh, back there next to Mr. Dodona. Welcome. <laughs> Connolly's uh, here for two weeks uh, working with Manny to uh, pass the baton, uh, and uh, you'll be sitting here uh, February 3 to start your uh, tenure as our interim superintendent. We're really looking forward to working with you. All right. Ms. Murray. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask on the... Uh, Code of Ethics. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible that the chair would let the board know uh, if they have designated an individual to cover? And it says about having the uh, chair speak. Uh, or designate. Oh, designate? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Could you let us know? Yes. If, if I if I email. Sorry. Absolutely. I'll email the board if I'm going to be out of town or something, and I designate somebody to speak. I'll notify the whole board right. by email. All right, make a note of that. All right, uh, last item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the January 6, 2015 meeting. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, Ms. Harris moves, Ms. Keyes seconds. Any changes, corrections to the minutes? I didn't see anything I thought needed to change. Uh, hearing none. Uh, we will proceed to a vote. All in favor of approving the minutes, please indicate. And the motion is uh, we got one, two, three, four, five. Those I was, I was abstention. Here. So one abstention. Okay, so 501. Minutes are approved. The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Kasimis. <laughs> Back on the job. Back on the job. And this key seconds. All in favor. The meeting is adjourned. Okay, I'll leave yet. Paperwork. Okay. Isn't too late? Can I do that?